Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. The tales I bring you could be called gothic. This has become an umbrella word to cover so many things. The true gothic was a story about horror beyond belief, ghouls and gargoyles, the unexplained and the unexplainable, creatures from a world beyond comprehension. But my favorite gothic tales are the ones which only seem to borrow from that world. Stories in which the explanation lies in this mundane one we occupy. Gothic mysteries, perhaps they should be called. This is one of them. So, the drawbridge still works, Jason. As you see, Master Ted. Hey! Up there, boys. I wonder what it'll be like. Marooned on an island once the bridge is taken away. Jason, if you knew Miss Barkley was coming, why wasn't the bridge left in place? It's never left in place except when it's used. For what? To keep the public out? Or shut the family in? Our mystery drama, The Deathly White Man was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Betsy Palmer. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. The Renzevelts are one of the oldest families in the United States. Linda Barclay, on the other hand, although she can trace her lineage as far back as most of us care to, is a product of the Middle West. Her father's job brought him east to the accident that killed him and crippled his wife, making her totally dependent on Linda for the rest of her life. When her mother finally died, Linda found herself alone and without money. That's why she answered the mysterious advertisement which has led her to the terrifying meeting with the Renzevelts and the curse of their history. Well, you're younger than I might have expected, Miss Barclay. That's something I'm scarcely able to do anything about, Mr. Renzevelt. And I'm not quite sure this would be the right job for you. My wife is... Well, after her fall, she's more than ever an invalid. But that's what I'm used to. That's what my mother was. I, ever since I was 15, the carriage overturned on the bend in the road, and my father was killed, and my mother pinned under the wheel. She never walked again. I had to lift her, carry her. I'm, I'm very strong, and I've, I've studied nursing, even if I don't have a degree. Oh, yes, yes, yes. My dear girl, you remember all that was in the letter when you replied to my advertisement. You, you don't believe me? Of course I do, but what is concerning me at the moment is... Not so much how good you would be for my wife, but... Uh, but what? Well, as how good this job would be for you. Or bad. I don't quite understand, Mr. Rensevelt. Well, for many reasons we live... That it is my family lives quite a bit outside the city on an island. Very isolated... My wife had a difficult time when our son was born. And in recent years, her mental health has been... Well, she uh, she retrogresses year by year. Oh. She can be very difficult at times, especially now since her injury. It's so much more difficult for her now that she can't... Now that um, her mobility is impaired because of what happened, she mustn't... Uh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm afraid you, you'd have to be a kind of jailer, too, and make sure that she keeps to her own quarters and... Yeah. Very well, then. Let's see how it works out. Hmm? How soon can you leave? As soon as I can pack. By tonight. 
No, 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 no. I shall drive up by carriage tonight myself. I, I need a little time to prepare my wife and the household for your arrival. You can take the train up tomorrow to the Coscarb. My um, housekeeper's son, Jason, will meet you at the train. His name is Jason Greaves. Is it a large menage? No, no, just Mrs. Greaves, my wife, Jason, a cleaning woman and a maid or so. And, and, and? Uh, and myself, of course, when I'm there. Business holds me a good deal to the city. Now, do you need money? No, 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 no. Better than that. Uh, here. Now, here are some traveling expenses. Fifty dollars? Well, that's far more than enough. Well, we can straighten things out once you get to Broomwagon. Where? Oh, I'm sorry. That's the old Dutch manor that we live in. Built oh, over three centuries ago. Oh. How did... How did Mrs. Rensevelt injure herself? Why, she, uh... She fell down a flight of stairs. We don't know why. There were quite severe head injuries, and uh, she's now confined to a wheelchair. Was it the way he said it? Was it just my imagination? Or was it some extension of a secret knowledge that he didn't want to reveal to me? For just a fleeting second, I had the feeling of rat feet scampering through dark and dank cellars. And so it was, on the following day, I found myself on the wheezing, puffing, somehow very self-important New Haven train on the way to Cos Cobb. I, uh, beg your pardon, is this seat taken? Oh, no, it isn't. But, uh... But, uh, the coach isn't very crowded. You consider me a masher? Well, after all, You I... don't know the New Haven. How quickly the coaches fill up. In no time, we shall be at 125th, and then in quick, quick succession, St. Mary's Park, Tremont Avenue, Bruckner Boulevard, Pelham Parkway, and a hundred others I might name, and each station pouring onto the train, the flotsam and jetsam who are fleeing the city. Mm. And your endeavor, since the car is practically empty at the moment, except for us, is to protect protect me from this possible flotsam and jetsam. <laughs> Not at all. I just happen to think you're the most attractive woman I ever remember seeing, and I'll happily make up any excuse to sit with you. Well, I really can't think of one that's good enough. No. Come on. Uh, how far are you going? Not nearly so far as you might like. Costco. Well, now there's a coincidence. The same stop as myself. I'm on my way up to, uh... uh Actually, it's a highly penitential journey. On my, I'm on the way up to see my mother. If you know Cos Cobb, you should know or have heard of my mother. Her name is Mrs. Carter Rensevelt. I looked at the handsome young man standing beside me, his gloves and his fedora held casually, but so stylishly. His hair a light brown and wavy. His eyes a deep, almost steel blue. And as I looked, a wave of... What? Anticipation, pleasure, excitement, or, or perhaps something even stronger welled up in me, constricting my throat. Uh, did you hear me? Yes, I... <laughs> yes, yes, of course. I get the impression you did recognize my mother's name. Oh, indeed I did. Then do I pass muster, and may I sit down? I'm sorry, please do sit, Mr. Rensefeld. Uh, oh, at last... What a relief. I didn't mean to keep you standing so long. My dear young lady, it's no relief to be off my feet. I was swept from them the moment I saw you. The relief is that you did not deny me your company. I could scarcely do that to my employer's son. What? I've been engaged by your father to be nurse to your mother at Broomwagon. My name is Linda Barclay. Didn't your father tell you about me? My father and I, Miss Barclay, are not on speaking terms. You said nurse... Uh... Tell me, is my mother worse? What does she need a nurse for? Well, I understand she had a fall. Mother? That's strange. A, a fall. How? Who was with her? I really don't know the details. I, I believe Mrs. Greaves or, or her son Jason found her. Mrs. Greaves? Is she back? What happened to Bunty? Bunty? Bunty, yes, Bunty. She was our housekeeper all the years I was growing up. She was almost more of a... Of Mrs. Bunter, her name was. She was a darling... Did she die? I don't know. I hope not. And my mother, how badly hurt is she from the fall? I can't answer. I, I believe she had an injury to her head and is in a wheelchair. Oh, no. 
moment or so ago after I met you, I wanted this pokey old train to take all the time in the world or even break down. Now I can't wait for it to get to Broomwagon. I have a ghastly feeling old ghosts are abroad again. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I, I think I shall repair to the bar car. As abruptly as he had appeared, he was gone. I remained looking after him for a long while, the passing countryside forgotten as my mind was filled with speculation. Jason Greaves was taller than my employer's son and heavy and dark and powerful looking, but his teeth had been startlingly white against his swarthy complexion as he greeted me with a smile that faded as quickly as it had come when he saw Mr. Rensselaer Jr. Now, riding in the carriage from the station, I was painfully conscious of powerful undercurrents of feeling between these two men. It was obvious that they disliked each other, but it seemed to be more from instinct than from acquaintance. Oh, it's all. Well, there we are. And here we are. That's broom wagon over there on the island, perched high on the rocks. But it's a real island. Open water all around. Well, what happened to the bridge? Must we go by boat? Well, Jason, must we? Or is it out of service again? No, Mr. Rensevelt. I keep it in service or out of service as is indicated. Excuse me a minute. Where's he gone? Oh, you'll see, to the bridge house over there. One at each end of the bridge can be operated from either side. I don't see any bridge. You see what looks like a dock? Uh, over on the island side. Yes. Yeah. Now watch it. It's hinged in the middle and operated partly by hydraulics, partly by the set of the tide, and part by counterweights. See? Look at that. It, it opens just like a huge arm. And when it's straight, it reaches from shore to shore. Some people, like my father, who belongs back in the Middle Ages, must have their precious privacy at all costs. Look at that nonsense. <laughs> it's ingenious, isn't it? It's incredible. Like the man who spawned it. And the rest of our private brood, whom you are about to meet. Unless you want to fly now while well, you still have the chance, Miss Barkley. I don't know what you mean. I'm not sure I do myself. It's just a feeling I have about my dear ancestral birthplace. So, the damn thing still works, Jason. As you can see, Master Ted. As long as you know how to handle it. Uh. Hey! Up there, boys. Don't look so scared, Linda. I'm not scared. Jason, why the devil, if you knew Miss Barkley was coming, even if you didn't know about me, didn't you leave the bridge in place? Mr. Renzevelt's orders. It's never left in place, except when it's to be used. By whom? By whoever is authorized. Hmm. But the question really is, old Beetlebrow, what is its real purpose? To keep the public out? Or to shut the family in? I slid a sideways look at this handsome young man beside me whose moods changed like a chameleon. And inside, I felt a cold and icy shudder. I wanted to cry out, take me back. But we were already over the bridge and on our way up the steep driveway that wound its way up to that great dark house. In the gathering dark, it loomed like some huge monster. And I had a feeling of terror lurking in and around it and unnamed things that cried out in the night. too late to turn back. Dear me. Now mark you, the ladies in these old Gothic mysteries did have a penchant for, or a habit of overstatement. But in Linda's case, well, I shall leave you to judge that for yourselves when I return with Act Two. One element is never missing from all true Gothic tales. The house. That gloom-shrouded mansion in whatever special guise it appears. Broomwagon. High on a rocky island, barely separated from the Connecticut coastland, which some ancient Renzevelt ancestor built. 
massive stone and mortar, it is intimidating before one enters it, and even more so after one is inside. The first night, I didn't meet my patient. Mrs. Greaves, the housekeeper, served us all dinner, and we retired early. My room was on the second floor, right next to Mrs. Rensevelt's bedroom, Mrs. Greaves had told me, but quite a way beyond it as you went down the hall. I had stopped for just a moment in curiosity outside my room to the patient's door, and then quickly, ashamed of myself, moved to my own room and had just entered when... I heard the sound of a door closing and a key in the lock. I looked out, and Mr. Ted Rensevelt was in the hall. Oh, uh... I'm sorry, Linda. Did I disturb you? Well, no, no. I, uh... Well, just the sound of the door attracted my attention. I was with, uh... My mother. How is she? Asleep. You look a little strange. Well, it's, it's nothing. Just that... Well, nothing. Oh, come on. You can't fob me off like that. What is it? Oh, silly. I... I thought you came from... From that door on the other side of the hall. That? <laughs> No, 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 scarcely. That, uh, that goes to the third floor in the turret rooms. Part of the house that's been shut off for years. Nobody uses that door. I'm sorry. It, it was just an impression. Linda, trust me. Believe me, I, I may be the only one you can in this house. All a dream. I, I remember waking up that first night at Broomwaken. Somewhere far away as, as from another world, and yet I knew it was in the house. There was this terrible, agonizing animal sound alone in that, that strange dark room with the, the massive oak chests and the high ornate wardrobes pressing in from the walls. I, I could feel the panic, bitter as vile in the back of my throat. But either it was a nightmare. Or I was worn out from excitement and the long journey, for suddenly it, it was morning and the sun was streaming in. Oh, mercy, Charles, you startled me. Oh, you're up early, surely. Well, I, 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 I couldn't sleep. Why? Oh, the, the excitement in a new place, I suppose. You know, new surroundings. Oh, is that all? What, what more should it be? You, you didn't hear anything. What sort of thing? Oh, anything out of the ordinary. Well, I... I was half asleep in the middle of the night. And I heard a... I don't know how to describe it, even if I... Even if I really did hear it. Oh, I... It was probably a bad dream. This musty old house produces a lot of sounds. Uh, perhaps it was the madam. No, it sounded farther away than that. Oh, you can't rightly tell. It's echoey, like, like a tomb here. You never know what you're hearing or where it's coming from. Well, I, I have coffee on and bacon frying. Will you have eggs? They're just some juice and coffee and toast is enough for me. Oh, stomach a little queasy, huh? Um, yes. Well, I'm not surprised. Look, this is no place for a girl like you. Pick up your skirts and run while you have the chance. While she has the chance for what, Mrs. Greaves? Oh, oh I, I, I didn't know you were there, Master Ted. I, I... I'm sure you didn't. Because... Weren't you advising Miss Barclay to get out of here before she's even found out what the job is all about? Oh, not exactly. Oh, but you've seen your... your mother. It's a very difficult job for a young girl, and I was... Whatever you want, Mrs. Greaves, I want her to stay. And my father's engaged her. You and your son are the ones I'm surprised to see back here. Well, it's where I belong. I'll know better about that soon. Come on. Let's have breakfast. While you're getting it, I'll take Linda up to Mother. Uh, shall I... Bring up Mrs. Rensevelt's tray? No, Linda can come and get it when she feels like eating. If, uh, you wouldn't mind, Linda. Oh, of course not. It's why I'm here, to, to serve her. The only good reason I can think of why you should be. Come on. Let's go meet the lady. I don't know what I expected, but certainly not what I saw. A bright, pert little woman with eyes as bright and darting and alive as a bird who may have been in a wheelchair but didn't look confined to it at all. At least, that was my first impression. But it didn't take long to change it. It was all a mask. This was a woman broken by life, 
terrified of something total and nameless, locked in a silent cage where no birds could sing, not, not even herself. Mother, it's Ted again. She's trying to say something, Ted. What? I don't know. I wish to God I did. Uh, uh, mother, uh, I want you to meet Miss Linda Barclay. Uh, yes, she's come to take care of you. How do you do, Mrs. Rensefeld? I, I hope I can be of help. Is there, is there anything I can get you? That's right. Yes, yes, to help you. As far as our conversation went, just that one possible word, and it terrified me because I wasn't sure of its meaning. Did she mean just that she was glad to have someone give a physical aid, or, or was it a cry of despair? Or was it my imagination being too lively? At any rate, Mr. Renz, I mean Ted, didn't seem to share my apprehensions as he walked me downstairs so that I could fetch the tray for Mrs. Rensfeld's breakfast. Ah, this damn flagstone staircase, dangerous as hell. I don't know why my father would never let these steps be carpeted. Is this where your mother fell? I don't know. It's all a bit vague. A lot of things vague around here. Your mother, she... Well, did you get the impression that she's scared of something? Well, wouldn't you be in her condition? Just take care of her. Stay with her at all times and I'll take care of you. Are you going to be staying? At least until my esteemed male parent gets back here where he belongs. Excuse me. Oh, is the madam ready for breakfast? Uh, Linda can get it for her and her own and take them up. I want to talk to you for a moment. I'll prepare the breakfast. Mrs. Greaves, what happened to Bunty? Uh, why, she was a very old woman after all, Master Rensselaer. She, she just died. How? Well, in her sleep. We found her dead in her bed. We? Who is we? Well, actually, it was Jason. Jason? How could he find her? What was Jason doing here? Well, your father had been nice enough to hire my son for general work, you see, and he was living in. Well, one morning, Bunty wasn't up bright and spry as usual, so he went up to her room. As I know the story, for of course I wasn't here, and there she was. Laid out, sweet and restful, but quite dead. I wish I'd known. It was quite a shock to me to learn it this late. Oh, but I thought you did. Jason said you were up here the very night she died in Cascar. Oh, I was, but the damn bridge was sewed up tight. I couldn't seem to attract anyone's attention. So I had to go back to New York. Oh, well, didn't your father tell you? My father and I haven't talked Shh. since... Perhaps you're right. I suppose family skeletons are best left in the closet. Except... Except what? They ought to be kept in the family and not involve any more people than already have to live with them. I couldn't help overhearing most of the conversation, and especially that last. For while I kept myself busy at the stove, my eyes glued to making toast and eggs and so forth... I was only too aware that Ted's eyes, at least, were looking towards me. What is it they're all afraid of, I kept thinking to myself. Not only then, but through the rest of the day and the days that followed. Until a special night. Not so much later, when I woke up in my own bed hearing... Yes. primitive reaction. Above me, in a dream or in waking, had loomed a face from, from the churchyard or, or the grave. Parchment white, drained of blood. Was it vision or reality? You all right? Yes, I... I, I I'm sorry. Well, I, what happened? I don't know how to say it. There, there was a... someone or, or something here... A, Pale white as a ghost and not, not quite human. Oh, and a bad dream. What else? I'm sorry. You, you must be right. It, it, it's just... A... Oh. Where's Ted? I, I mean, Mr. Rensselaer. 
Ted? I don't know. Right at this moment, I guess it's something we'd all like to know. So, there we have it. The basic of the gothic premise. What has this sweet, innocent young girl got herself entangled in? What web of mystery and death? And how can she handle it? Or at least extricate herself before it's too late? I shall return shortly with Act Three. As in all good gothic mysteries, it is question time now. How did Mrs. Bunter, the former housekeeper, really die? Is Ted Renzevelt as charming and desirable a man to love as Linda would like to believe? Or does he pose a threat to her? Where is Mr. Renzevelt? And what is the specter that haunts Linda, either in reality or in her dreams? The following days were the strangest of my life. There seemed to be a conspiracy of silence about Broomwagon. Poor Mrs. Rensevelt was held helpless, unable to speak, though often watching her eyes, I was sure she wanted to. For days now, she had been confined to her bed. Ted had disappeared mysteriously. And I even had the idea that Jason and his mother didn't know whether he was on the island or if he wasn't. How he had gotten to the mainland. I had no further visits from the white man or dreams, and I went about my daily tasks in a sort of stupor. Till at last I, I couldn't stand it, and I followed Jason down into the cellar one day. Who is it? It's me, Jason. Linda. Oh. What are you doing down here? N nothing. I just wanted to talk to you. Did you have to follow me to the cellar? No, but I haven't had a chance to see you alone, and I... Well, I was curious. Curious about what? I'm only human. Curious about all of this strange old place. Oh, well, I picked the cellar. I didn't. You did. And I'm just as curious about all the upper floors. Oh, I... Just normal interest. Doesn't anyone ever go up there? Why are they all closed off? Saves on the heat bill. All right. Is that why the door is locked? How do you know it is? I tried it. Why? Well, the uh, first night that I was here, I thought I... Yes? But I, I thought I I saw Ted, I, I mean Mr. Rensselaer Jr., coming from that door. Well, did you now? And why would he be going up there? Well, maybe to visit someone. Jason... Is there someone else up there or living in the house, someone that I haven't met? What? I don't know what you mean. I don't understand. I'm really quite level-headed normally, but this, this man, the man with the parchment face and the, the snow-white hair, the, the one who sometimes wanders at night... <laughs> You're not sounding very level-headed now. No, I guess not. Oh, I, I am sort of scared. Well, then, Linda, want to take my advice. Get out. Get out while the getting's good. Yes, that's what your mother said. My mother isn't always so smart, but if she warned you off, then she was. But what do I have to be afraid of? I'll let you answer that question for yourself, since you were the one who brought it up. Oh, I, I just can't walk out without seeing them. Where is Mr. Rensselaer Sr.? Doesn't he ever come here? He'll be here at the end of the week, but if I were you, I wouldn't wait for him. Why not? I have to be paid. And... Jason! Jason, is Miss Barkley down there with you? Yes, Mom, what is it? It's Mrs. Rensselaer. She's having some kind of a fit or something. I think she needs her nurse. As I hurried up the stairs with Mrs. Greaves, I sensed that her summons was not as urgent as it seemed to be. So I took the opportunity to ask a few questions I hadn't had a chance to. It's just that I'm so worried about the poor little thing. Mrs. Greaves, Ted... I Master Rensselaer, when I first met him, said that he was surprised that you were back. You worked here before. Oh, dear me, yes. I, I started out as the upstairs maid when we had a whole proper staff here with a butler. But you left. Well, I, I had my first... I mean, you know, Jason to bring up. And when his father left us, I had to be home with him. You started to say you're first. Do you have another child? Oh, no. I, I, I had one born who was was dead to me. Oh, but here we are. You'd better have a look at the madam. 
I went in to Mrs. Rensefeld with so many questions I would have liked to have asked unanswered. I found her in physically acceptable shape, but nervous, and she seemed to want to be alone with me. Everything under control, Mrs. Greaves. I'll stay with her now. You know, she is a bit much for a little slip of a girl like you. I can handle her if you want to go. Everyone seems in such a hurry to get rid of me. Oh, I didn't say so. You intimated it. And both Jason and Ted have said so flatly. Why am I not wanted? Well, maybe we... Maybe they were thinking of you and your, your well-being. Why, am I in some danger? You don't answer. Is it... Is it the ghost or whoever he is? The one that lives upstairs? Oh, what do you know about upstairs? Nothing yet. Well, then leave it. Forget it. And if you won't go, then mind your own business. I feel like Alice in Wonderland, curiouser and curiouser. Oh, Miss Rensterfeld, did you want something? Where? Where? My son? Oh, I, I don't know where he is. I'm sorry. Oh, no. No. Not not after what, dear? I'm sorry, I don't understand. Oh, you, you don't know my, my son. Oh. With a sigh, she sank back on the bed. I took her pulse, checked her blood pressure, her heart. All normal. She was just quietly and simply asleep. But in checking her pulse, a large old-fashioned key fell from her hand. I waited till that night to use it where I suspected it would fit. Just as I thought, it opened that mysterious door that led to the upper floors. I searched through the cobwebs room rooms and at length up one last small flight of stairs to the turret room. The door was open. The room was empty. But the signs that someone had lived there for a long, long time were everywhere. I suddenly had a searing vision of that poor white thing that had come to me in the night. Looking for someone, oh. Linda? Oh, Jason, what are you doing here? Now, that's really my question, isn't it? But you don't have to answer, I will. Looking for Ted Rensefeld, weren't you? Ted? No. No, why? Is he back? Oh, he never went away. I don't understand. You weren't supposed to. But you had to keep sticking your nose into everything, didn't you? I knew it wasn't a dream. There was a man, that strange, deathly white man, wasn't there? That's right. The real Ted Rensevelt. Last of the Rensevelt line. What about the Ted Rensevelt that I met on the train? Oh, you mean my half-brother. I don't know what I mean. I'm, I'm so confused. All right, then, Linda, let me put you straight. Twenty-seven years ago, my mother was a maid in this house. I was only a few years old and boarded out. My mother couldn't take care of me herself. She had to work to support me because my father had died. Mrs. Rensevelt was carrying her first child, and my mother was carrying a child at the same time. It's the mad fancy of some random god that Mrs. Rensevelt went full term to bear a monster. While my mother had her child early and he was perfectly healthy. You mean the... That strange white man is actually the real Ted Rensevelt? That's right. And the child my mother bore became the Ted Rensevelt you find so irresistible. But how? Oh, my dear, given most of the money in the world and proper isolation, anything can be accomplished. My half-brother simply replaced the idiot for a price, of course. And the... the other child? Should have been strangled at birth. But Mrs. Rensevelt wouldn't hear of it, so... he was hidden away. Hidden away? To molder into dust in this prison here? Oh, the poor man. No wonder he's as pale as a ghost. But what's happened to him? What have you done with him? Just moved him to the cellar, near the scene of action. And besides, he'd grown much too crafty about escaping from upstairs. Well, now, what do you mean, the scene of action? It's all coming to a head, my dear. It's too bad you had to get involved. I told you to get out. However, it doesn't matter now. 
It'll all be over by tomorrow night. What will all be over? Come along with me. I'm taking you to the cellar to join some friends. No, I, I, I don't want to go to the I cellar. I could lug you there bodily, but why make the effort? Alive, I'd have to fight you, and dead, you're only wait. Oh, yes, and uh, there is a Santa Claus who brought me this for Christmas. It's a gun. Oh, now, don't make me use it, please. Obediently, I descended all the stairs from the turret room to the cellar and then deeper to the sub-cellar. There was a big cave there with a harbor that looked out to the sea and a large motor cruiser was moored at a deep water dock deep in the cave, almost directly under the house. There were some men in the cockpit and one heavily bearded one who slung himself ashore with an easy cat movement and came to us. We've got too much riding on this to take any chances. Take the girl and put her with the others. The man with the beard took me to a door, opened the bar, and shoved me in. It was sort of a marine storage room, windowless with no way out except the door. And I was not alone. With me was that deathly white man and Ted, the man I knew as Ted Rensifelt. Good Lord, Linda, they've got you too. Why? Why you? And... Yes, poor gentle thing. He doesn't understand what's happening. But what is happening, Ted? Oh, I don't know where to begin. Jason's been blackmailing my father. Uh, well, the man I always thought was my father till I uncovered the family secret. And when you found it out, he made you a prisoner? Uh, the world's prize sucker. I came home to verify some suspicions I've had for years and was careless enough to let my mother, my real mother, Mrs. Greaves, put some knockout drops in something I drank before I went to bed. I woke up here with my, uh, what is he, brother in misfortune? What be The poor thing. How could anyone hurt him? How could anyone hurt him more? But Linda, he has less to worry about than you and I. We've got to get out of this. Well, what do we have to worry about? My father. What? Uh, the man who wants to think of me as his son. Can you imagine this nonsense? This rage for immortality. This crazy passion to have a line carried on as if we were an ancient line of kings. Carter Renzevelt, above anything else, must have an heir to satisfy him. And it can't be this poor creature. What the Shh, now you will. But you are his heir. How can Jason hope Don't to... Don't you see it, Linda? Carter Renzevelt is a very rich man. He's on his way here with a ransom to free me as of this moment. But that doesn't work. I mean, even if he pays it, the, the whole idea of kidnapping, extortion, whatever you want to call it, is that the criminal has to be anonymous. Now, if everyone knows it's Jason... Then, everyone who's a witness against him, including the old man, can't be around to testify. Well, that means all of us. How? That's how I got caught and put away. You see, he has this whole place mined. He can blow Broomwagon sky high with one touch on the button. And he has his ship standing by to escape on. Well, how do we stop him? Go, I go, I go. Oh, shh. Soon, soon now. How do we stop Jason? Now, that's the question. All right, everyone. You took me from my room in the sky. I go back now. All right, knucklehead, just stay where you are. I want to go home. Back I off. go home to rest. Get back, will you? Now, this is a gun. I, I want to go home. No, no, don't. He has a gun. Away from me, will you? You idiot! You broke that! pain! That pain you did that! Oh, oh my wrist! You that. Did. Ah. Yeah. No! You shot me! Yeah. Get your hands off my throat! You yeah. No! Stay back, Linda. I'll, I'll get the gun. Uh, Linda, are you all right? Yes, but, but, but he's still... He's still choking him. Get his fingers off Jason's throat. Uh, I can't. They're, they're locked tight. Well, it, it won't make any difference. His pulse is gone. 
I guess that poor white man didn't know his own strength. Uh, he strangled him? Partly. But first, I think he broke his neck. Well, I can't tell you how sorry I am to have exposed you to all this, Miss Barkley. When I hired you, I had no idea... Please, Mr. Rensifer, don't worry about me. Yes, thanks to my adopted son and you, and good luck, I have few worries anymore. Jason is dead, his gang dispersed, and my poor unfortunate son is better off dead. For the first time in 27 years, my wife can hold a little peace. Now, my dear... What can I do for you who seems to have been a lucky charm in return? Well, let me ask that question, Dad. Linda, <laughs> I wanted to ask it the first day on the train. Will you marry me? Now, there's the way a good gothic mystery should end. The right people are alive, the ghosts laid to rest, and the heroine ends up by marrying the hero. Old-fashioned? Perhaps. But aren't we all looking back a little these days in the hope that the ones ahead will be a little more like the days gone by? I'll be back shortly. Perhaps the guilt and the long agony of knowing she had concealed her real son brought freedom to Mrs. Renzevelt. The mental anguish relieved. More and more she found that she could walk and move. She and Mr. Renzevelt Sr. travel a good deal now. The younger Renzevelts have returned to New York and live as happy cliff dwellers. For them, a house is definitely not a home. Our cast included Betsy Palmer, Russell Horton, Bryna Rayburn, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.